At 92, Edith O'Hara still runs the repertory theater she founded 37 years ago. But Edith's journey to her West 13th Street Theater in New York started about as far off-Broadway as you can get. She tells her story. I was born in the wilds of northern Idaho, and sometimes people don't distinguish whether it's Iowa or Idaho. Oh, yeah, I had a cousin in Des Moines, you know. <laughs> but Idaho, way, way out west, where it joins Candle, uh, Canada, you know, the panhandle that goes up. And, and my father had a logging camp. So we were in the mountains with no electric power, no modern conveniences of any kind. Uh, we had uh, a river in our front yard and a mountain in our backyard. And the one-room school that we went to had a total of eight kids in all six grades put together, including three from our family. And it, would, it was just, uh, I loved uh, the way we grew up. There was such freedom and no outside world, you know. We had a vegetable garden right in our front yard, and we had cows and horses and chickens and the whole, the whole nine yards, and never heard the word theater or movie. When we moved to town for seventh grade, then we were in a normal school. You know, I was in a junior high school, and the teacher put me in a play, and I knew the minute I was in that play, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to do more theater. What else can I do? What else can I do? Edith went to theater classes at the University of Idaho and came to New York to be an apprentice in summer stock. I was just so impressed. I'd already been doing theater at the University of Idaho, you know, so I, I had gotten into that part of it and had, was in plays there and the whole thing. And then to meet these actors from the group theater who were superior actors and to become close with them, they liked us apprentices and they would hold workshops with us and show us how the group theater used to uh, work in the summers and develop their craft and the whole thing. And I was tempted to stay. I thought, I want to stay here and, and be in New York. But I had been accepted at UCLA for junior year, and that sounded like something I should do. And on top of that, I had my classmates in the car who needed a ride home. You know, so I went reluctantly back. Edith planned to come back to New York to the theater, but her life took a turn when she married, had children, and moved to Pennsylvania. I was content with my life in Pennsylvania because there was theater there, and I enjoyed my, my children very much, and as I look back on it, uh, the fact that I have the wonderful children that I have compensated for the fact that the marriage wasn't wonderful, that I was free to do my own thing. I started a little drama program, and I taught them how to speak better and a and, uh, little acting, and I liked that so much, I decided I'm going to start my own children's theater. And I found that so rewarding that I decided at that time I liked this better than acting. And I gave up the idea of acting. And uh, I had uh, a community theater that did good plays that I was involved with. And I just changed my mind, and from then on I produced things. I started a summer theater with Art Smith, and inadvertently that brought me to New York. The summer theater produced a musical so good that it moved to New York. When the show closed, I decided that I would stay in New York City and find myself a theater that I could have for, for my own. And it took a whole year, and finally, by the grace of God or whatever, an ad in Village Voice said, Building for Lease contains small theater. Our whole purpose here really always has been a place for people to be able to develop their creativity, whether it's acting, directing, playwriting, uh, and particularly playwriting. What is happening now? The famous playwrights are gone, and nobody's replacing them too much. Broadway does revivals, and, and we just want to help playwrights and be sure that they get a chance, along with 
actors getting a chance to learn and perform. Edith's own children have been successful on and off Broadway, and some of the company's playwrights and plays have gone on to great success, but Edith keeps her eye on her goal. Tom Harlan is a perfect example of something important that we've done to help someone. We gave him a place to stay in the building, and we had no clue during those two or three years that he, when he first came, that he was filled with the artistic abilities he's filled with. And he can make costumes that you wouldn't believe, just unbelievable costumes and sets. It's a good place to work. It's a good place to experience what you need to do and, and develop your craft here as well. This theater, in a sense, has its door open all the time for people to come through the door and try to get on stage or do things or craft or the theater art or whatever they want to do in the theater, you know. Which is a good thing. I really think it really serves a purpose, a really good purpose. The theater's internship program is important to Edith. We have 30 interns from all over the world and all over the country. Sandra Nordman, who works with me, is a literary manager. Since 2003, we've had between 30 and 40 interns each year come to the repertory in the summer. They're between ages 14 and 23. Uh, those that are in college are in theater programs. They learn absolutely everything here, from writing to directing, producing, stage managing, acting. Anything they want to try, anything new. At 92, is it time for Edith to slow down? Even at my age, I'm down here every day, all day, you know, working, helping, uh, seeing that things go well. What keeps me going is just absolutely loving what I'm doing, realizing it's so fulfilling to know that I can make, uh, I can do, have an influence on somebody's life that can help them. Edith is part owner of the theater's building, but there are attempts to sell it. This feisty woman, though, is fighting tooth and nail to save it. This man said, now let's sell the building. They'll build a high rise and they can build you a new theater in it. And I thought, I'm not interested in that. This is my home. So when will she retire? I will not retire. <laughs> Never. Sad. Never. Sad.